What up? We have starts of the week, week 10. This is where it starts to be very important, especially if you're three and six, four and five, five and four, six and three. These are important matchups to win. So then you can start preparing for the playoffs. We're going to have some, probably some special episodes uh, coming up in a couple of weeks to how to prepare for your fantasy football playoffs. But we're going to do the starts of the week. Now, of course, Tua, Justin Fields, these are players that are extremely hot and on fire right now with great matchups. I see them as being almost automatic starts this week unless you have a Patrick Mahomes or you have pretty much that's it because Josh Allen is hurt and stuff, so we don't understand potentially his limitations there. I know the Vikings defense has been uh, somewhat poor in the, rec in, in the past defense, uh, but Tua Fields, those are pretty much automatic starts, even over like a Justin Herbert and things like that. We're going to go with two other starts. These are players, actually one of them I just picked up off the waivers in the waiver wire here is Trevor Lawrence against Kansas City. Kansas City has let up 17 plus points to five quarterbacks and 20 plus points to four quarterbacks. See, Trevor Lawrence is a top 10 quarterback this year, which is, seems surprising just because um, he hasn't really been talked about a lot. A lot of it's been Fields. A lot of it's been Tua. Their step-ups. But Trevor Lawrence has actually had a decent year this year. Spreading the ball to Evan Ingram. Travis Etienne out of the backfield. Who has been an absolute star the last month here. And then Christian Kirk. His, his, basically he's tried and true and faithful. And then even Zay Jones. So I think Trevor Lawrence is an automatic start here. Or not an automatic start. But I think he is definitely in that category. Where he's going to have a really good game. Look at 20 points. Um. That's where I see uh, Trevor Lawrence being at, at this week. Uh, Daniel Jones is another one against Houston. Hor Houston, horrible defense. And Daniel Jones has actually shown to be somewhat of a decent quarterback, even with horrible options uh, at the receiving game. He's had basically Barkley, and that is about it. But I still see Daniel Jones as being a startable asset here uh, compared to like the Derek Cars and some other quarterbacks that we're going to talk about actually in tomorrow's show. Running backs. Deontay Foreman against Atlanta. He just almost scored 32 points just two weeks ago against Atlanta. So Deontay Foreman is an automatic start this week versus some of the other running backs, of course, that we're going to talk about tomorrow that have a lot bigger names. Deontay Foreman here is a start, even though he had a bad week last week. Uh, I think he's going to rebound against Atlanta's defense. Now, Cordell Patterson on the other side of that matchup. Of course, they're at Carolina. Um, Really, if you look at it, they've let up 15 plus points to six different running backs, and they just let up 55 points to Joe Mixon. Now, Cordero Patterson's not Joe Mixon, but uh, Cordero Patterson actually had a really solid week last week when he came back from the IR, and I think Cordero Patterson will continue to have uh, a good week against Carolina here. So start both of your running backs in this matchup. The next one this is actually two because they play each other again. It's Jamal Williams and David Montgomery. Uh, Detroit, Chicago, both very bad against the run this year. Um, so I, I understand that Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon didn't have a successful game last week. But right now the Packers offense is so confusing. I'll just say that. I think David Montgomery is going to get back on track. Look at look at his snap percentages. 70% the last couple of weeks here. And so he is the bell cow. I know that a lot of people talk about Khalil Herbert, uh, but he's not getting the snap percentage. I want the guy who's on the field getting 70% of the snaps against Detroit's run defense. And Jamal Williams, DeAndre Swift has unfortunately just been disappointing. He's been great with his small touches, but Jamal Williams is the touchdown getter. And against Chicago's poor defense, I am going with Jamal Williams here. Wide receivers, Chris Alava is a DFS, DFS da daily fantasy support. He is he is going to be against the Pittsburgh's defense. I'm so excited because Pittsburgh's defense is the worst defense against pass catchers. And so Chris Alava is an automatic start. You are starting him, and he's actually shown really well uh, this year. And so Chris Alave is an easy start uh, of the week here. And so the next one is going to be DJ Moore against Atlanta. He just scored literally 27 points. Not just just a short two weeks ago again. This Carolina Atlanta matchup. I, I really don't like when NFL schedules have teams so close to each other. Um, back, almost not back to back weeks, but I mean two weeks apart. So DJ Moore had it. He was he was great, great, and then all of a sudden he had a horrible uh, week last week, and so he's going to get back on the train tracks here. Um, also, a sneaky start is Terrace Marshall. Terrace Marshall's actually been getting quite a bit of target share here. So Terrace Marshall. 
is it a potential dart throw here that could potentially be a successful fantasy player for week 10. And the last one is Amari Cooper is an automatic. This is another big start here. Miami's defense has been poor because I feel like they just keep, uh, I mean, you have Waddle and Hill on the offensive side, and it feels like these are just shootouts in Miami. And Miami's defense has just not shown enough. I know they traded for Bradley Chubb. We'll see if that changes their defense at all. But uh, Mari Cooper is going to be having a huge feast here uh, against Miami. D uh, tight ends, we're going it. We're doing it. We're, we're doing Greg D. We're doing Dolchich. He's at 36.2 points in the last three weeks. His only three weeks. So really, you're looking at Until he shows that he can't perform and against this matchup, I feel like this Broncos-Tennessee matchup, I'm not starting many people. I mean, I'm starting Judy, and I'm starting Greg D if I'm in a, a pinch with some of these tight end buys. Mark Andrews buy. Um, Hayden Hurst buy. I mean, there's a couple other buys as well. And so... That's I, I am definitely starting Greg D out of any of these three players that we're going to be talking about. Kate Otten versus Seahawks. Seahawks have let up 10 plus points to eight different tight ends. Eight different tight ends. And so they just, that, that's all they know how to do. So if you see a, one of your tight ends against the Cardinals or Seattle, you almost have to play him no matter what because they just seem to be just, I, I don't know what happens. I, Cardinals did this, I feel like four years ago where I just would just be like, okay, who's, Atlanta, who's Arizona playing? Oh, that's a no-name tight end. Okay, well, let's play. And all of a sudden, you'd be like 7 for 70 and a touchdown. It seemed to be that way against Arizona. And Arizona's back at it. They don't know how to cover the tight end. I don't know what it is in that water over in Arizona. Uh, whatever it is. Njoku coming back from injury. Um, again, this is against Miami. 10 plus uh, points to six different tight ends. So not as bad as the Seahawks, but still not great at all. And so I'm, I am seeing Cooper and Njoku being exceptionally great uh, plays this week in week 10. So again, these are the starts of the week. Uh, if you're new to the channel, again, subscribe. Uh, it helps the channel out and throw a like. And any questions that you have before game time, uh, just throw them in the comment box or watch tomorrow's video and you can throw it in the comments there too. All right, peace out. We'll see you tomorrow.